Let's rise up to pray. I want us to ask God to speak to our hearts for the few minutes we have before us that the love of Jesus will give you all freedom that you will experience a deeper love Jesus so much loves us he paid this, the price for our salvation with his life to keep us to make our lives beautiful glorious wonderful in Jesus name we are praying Father, I want to thank you once again for bringing us together as sons and daughters to hear from you, to learn of you. Lord, we're asking that the purpose of this meeting today will cause joy in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You can sit down. After this short exhortation, we are going to have a session, we call it interactive. We we'll divide ourselves into groups where we share together. The reason why we call you and why we are doing that is to encourage you. Some of us, when we came to the Lord and we gave our life to Christ, or we even go to church or whatever, but some people say, may say, I go to church before today, but I want to tell you why we are doing what we are doing. Look at the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I read from verse 24. Are you there? And let us do what? Consider one and another. To do what? To provoke unto love and to good works. We consider one another. And look at verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one and another. I want you to mark that word, exhorting one another encouraging one another there are some people that will run the christian race run a little and stop there are those who started very well but along the line they slow down there are those who made up their mind initially that they were going to serve the lord that they want to make it to heaven but because of temptations because of sin you know because sin is on the increase and their sin is multiplying every day and as a result of that, the love of many are diminishing or waxing cold. But the Bible said in these last days, at this end time, we need to exhort one another to continue. So that's the reason for our coming together. So that whatever we are going to do here is to contribute to your life positively. So I would like to share with you on the topic, Christianity, church, or Christ. Religion or righteousness? Christianity, church or Christ? Religion or righteousness? There are some people that look at Christianity as church. There are those who only consider Christianity as religion. There are those who look at Christianity as just, just some other things. But if you look at the Bible, God looked at Christianity as the life that begins with Christ. Because Christianity is the nature of Christ. Look at the book of Acts chapter 11. I want to read verse 26. So Christianity goes beyond church. Christianity goes beyond religion. But then, a Christian must go to church. But going to church alone, without knowing the reason for going to church, will amount to hell. But then, one cannot say to be a Christian 
I will not go to church. But we don't make the church as if it is a church that we talk more about than the life. In Acts chapter 11, I said verse 26. Acts 11, verse 26. Church, are you there? And when he had found him, this was a notorious man, a terrible, wicked man, by name Saul of Tarsus, before he was converted to Paul. He was an injurious man, very bad, very sinful, criminal, so to say. But when he got his life to Christ, that's in chapter 9 of Acts of Apostle, his life changed. He became a new creature. All the former sinful life gone. But look at what happened here in verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Assembled themselves how? With the church. And taught much people in the church. They taught much people. That's what we do. When we come together like this, we open our eyes, we look at the Bible, we share the Bible. They touch much people in the church. Look at this. And the disciples were called, what do you see next? Christian first in Antioch. This is the first mention of the word Christian. And that word Christian simply means Christ-like. Those who have Christ-like nature are those we call Christians. They are little Christ. Their behavior, like Christ. Their character, their Christ. So it does not matter the church you belong. If one is going to church for years and the life of the man or the woman has not been turned around, changed or transformed to be like Christ, such a person can never call himself or herself a Christian. That's why I ask a question. Christianity, is it church or Christ? Is it religion or righteousness? Now, if you look at the word Christian, it has to do with the life of Jesus Christ. And it goes beyond religion. It is righteousness. Because when you come to Christ, it makes you righteous. There are some people, even churches, that do not believe that one can be free from sin that one can stop sinning, that one can come out of sin. And such people don't believe the Bible. They don't read the Bible. Because if Jesus cannot bring us out of sin, then his death is in vain. Christ came to save us from sin. Look at the Bible. In Matthew chapter 1, in verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, Reading from verse 21. The goal of Christianity, the purpose why Christ came, is to bring man, boys and girls, men and women, out of sin. He did not come to just make us religious people, churchgoers, just working for God, going to church, but our names are not in the book of life. He came to bring us out of sin. Look at verse 21 of Mark 1. Sorry, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. Who can tell me the name of that son? Shout that name again. And thou shalt call his name again. For he shall do what? Save his people from their sins. This is what Christ came to do for us. He came to save us from our sins. All of us were born sinners. We came into the world bad people. But then Christ came to bring us out of our sin. To close a chapter of sin in our life. Bring us out of drunkenness, out of smoking lifestyle, out of fornication, out of stealing, out of lying. And then change our lives. Then also transfer our name from the book of death and destruction into the book of life. So that when you die and leave this world, then you'll be able to see God. This is what Christ came to do for us. So this goes beyond church. This goes beyond religion. 
That's why I said Christianity Is it church or Christ Is it religion Or righteousness Look at 1 John Chapter 3 1 John Chapter 3 So that you will understand that gathering here Is not for church Our gathering is for the Bible It's for Christ So that we look at the scriptures together Look at the truth together That is able to qualify us Set us free Emancipate us Give us a change of life Transformation And get, give us a new life In What did I mention? 1 John chapter 3 God bless you You are a good listener Chapter 3 I read from verse uh, 4 The Bible says Whosoever committed sin Transgressed also the law For sin is the transgression of the law And ye know that He was manifested to do what? To do what? To, to do what? As your sin be taken away That's a question I know we go to church I know we believe this and that But it was manifested to do what? To take away our sins Anyone whose sin is not taken away Is not born again It's not a Christian It's not a child of God He can go to any church He can belong to any group But it was manifested Made known To take away our sins Look at the Bible To take away our sins And in him Because we are following him Is no sin then whosoever abided in him What's the next word there? Sineth not There are some people that believe that One can never stop sinning That no matter how much you go to church No matter how, how long you have been in the church That you cannot stop sinning But the Bible says that He that believes That is a child of God And confess and believe That the Bible says something will happen in his life Whosoever abided in him What do you see there? Sineth not Whosoever sineth What do you see there? Has not seen him Neither known him He can belong to any church But he has not known Christ He can go to the best church But he has not known Christ He can even be a choir or a singer in the church But he has not known Christ He can serve in the drama ministry He has not known Christ He can even be a preacher But he has not known Christ There are preachers that may not be May be like, like Nicodemus Nicodemus was a preacher he was a teacher in the U.S. synagogue. Yet, this man was never born again. He was a teacher. He was a preacher, but he was not saved. Until the day he met with Jesus Christ, in the night, that encounter with Jesus Christ turned his life around. And so, that's what happened. The Bible said that anyone that have not uh, stopped sinning, that person has not known Christ. Look at verse 7 now. Little children... You know what that means? Members of the churches. Brothers and sisters. The whole world. All those who go to church every Sunday. Know this. Little children. Let no man. Let no preacher. Deceive you. He that doeth righteousness. What do you see there church? What do you see there? Even as he is said. Have you not had people say that there's no righteous man on earth? Answer me now. Yes or no? Have you not had that? Okay, what should we say about this one now? God is a liar. Churches are saying the truth and preachers. God will always be truthful. The Bible says that he that doeth righteousness is righteous. But some will tell you nobody can be righteous. That we are all like fishes in the river We cannot deny water That's what they will tell you And they look for excuses for sinning For committing sin For continuing their sin Not to repent They say they tell us Our church tell us Our pastor tell us Nobody can be free from sin And for that They console themselves in iniquity And remain in iniquity And they feel that they have the license The Bible says something Look at the book of Romans Chapter 6, look at verse 1. Then you will understand that Christianity goes beyond church and it goes beyond religion. It's a life. In Romans chapter 6, look at verse 1. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Please read your Bible so that we understand together, we learn together. 
You see, when you know the Bible, you'll be free from error. You'll be free from deception. And you know, the problem all over the world today is that we have a lot of believers who claim to be born again, who don't live by the Bible. They live by yes say. Because if you come to me or I come to you and you tell me some things and I've not been able to cross-check that thing you are telling me with the Bible, whether that thing you are saying is wrong or right, I might be tempted to believe what you are telling me. But if I know the Bible myself and you are telling me this is like this, and then I go back to the Bible and I discover that what you are telling me is opposed to the Bible, contradicts the Bible, then I will throw what you are telling me away and hold to the Bible. A lot of people don't look at the Bible themselves, don't understand what God is saying. They just believe by church dogma. My pastor said this. My church said this. What my church is saying, how true is this? What I am talking about, is it real? Is it scriptural? That's why I said you open Bible, the Bible. Look at Romans chapter 6, in verse 1. I read, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Look at answer in verse 2. What do you see there? God forbid. Can we all say God forbid? You know, there are some people that say, okay, no matter how much you go to church every day, you must have to continue. See, you cannot come out of this thing. Uh, you know, every small girl must come in fornication, must have a boyfriend. Every young, uh, young boy must have a, uh, a girlfriend. And everybody must come in. You must tell lies. You must fight. You must do, you know, it's a nature of man. Then Paul was not tempted to ask them. I said, if you say you are a child of God, you know God must you continue in sin and use the grace of God to cover your sin, that grace will abound the Bible says God forbid look at verse 2 now, God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin what do you see there live any longer therein we mean that when you are born again you confess your sin this is more than going to church this is more than belonging to a church. This is more than religion. That's why I say Christianity. Is it a church or Christ? It is Christ. Christianity, is it religion or righteousness? It is righteousness. Because religion is just a mere practice. Anybody could be religious. There are those who are religious today, they, they are killing their fellow human beings. All in the name of what? Religion. They are religious, but no righteousness in them. There are those who are religious, but yet in the same group of religion together, they are committing crime against themselves. That's me, a religious person. But Christianity is righteousness because a righteous man would not like to do evil. A righteous woman would not like to commit sin. So it is more than religion, but righteousness. And it is more than a church, but Christ. Because Christ in us is what made a difference. Look at 1 Corinthians now. Chapter 5, verse 17. Christianity. Is it church or Christ? Religion or righteousness? What should be your answer? I ask you now. Christianity. Is it church or Christ? Answer me now. Christianity. Is it church or Christ? Look at the Bible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at verse 17 now. That will give us an answer. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Chapter 5, verse 17. Chapter 5, verse 17. Are you there? Church, are you there? Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in church, is that what you see there? We mean that someone could be in church, but not, can never be a, a, a new creature. There are those who have been in church for years. They still remain old creatures because it is not the church they belong that really changed them. It is the Christ in them. So, that's why I said Christianity, it is Christ, not church. Look at it. Therefore, if any man, any woman, any boy, any girl be in who? In Christ. When you are born again, you are in Christ. In John chapter 1, verse 12, for as many as receive him, to them give you the power to be what? To become the sons of God. 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, what do you see there? All things have become new. So if I'm in church, and I'm not in Christ, I can remain in church for 10 years, for 50 years, for 15 years, as case may be, and I'll still remain an old creature. I can be anybody in the church. I can have any position in the church, but that would not change me. But if I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ, then it is that Christ in me that will transform my life and make me a new creature. And all the old sin in my life will pass away and my life will be renewed, recreated, regenerated by Christ. So it is Christ that changes our lives. It is Christ that forgives our sin. It is Christ that gives us a new life to live by the grace of God. So that's why Christianity goes beyond church. It is Christ. And also goes beyond religion. It is righteousness. 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 I believe God will give us this grace in Jesus' name. Look at 1 John chapter 3 from verse 8 to 10. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. 1 John chapter 3, 8 to 10. 1 John chapter 3, 8 to 10. Are we there? From verse 8 to 10. He that committed sin is a very good Christian. Are you there? Are you with your Bible there? He that committed sin is a child of God. Eh? Are you with me, dear? He that committed sin is of what? He that committed sin is of what? Can anybody accept this in this world? Nobody. Even if you see the worst sinner in your compound or in your yard, and then instead of telling the person, good morning, man, good morning, sir, and you tell the person, if he's a criminal, and you greet the person, you say, good morning, Mr. Child of Satan. Would that person be happy with you? Answer me now. Good morning, daughter of devil. Would that person be happy with you? Even if the worst criminal, that person will not be happy because nobody wants to be identified with the, the devil. But the word of God said, any man, any woman, any boy, any girl that commits sin belongs to who? Belongs to the devil. That's the word of God. Whether people believe it or not, that's the scriptures. You cannot be a sinner and be a friend of Jesus and be a child of God and be a candidate of heaven. No, no way. He that committed sin is of the devil. And the Bible said, For the devil sinner from the beginning. And for this reason, like what we read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was made manifest. That he might do what? Destroy the works of the, of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, what do you see there? Doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of, eh, of God. In this, the children of God are made known and manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his eh? His brother. Can I hear a good amen, dear? Amen. We will go beyond church. Give me a good amen. amen. I say we will go beyond church. Amen. I will go beyond religion. Amen. So we have great multitude, great population of members of churches without Christ and Christ likeness. Very many all over the world. Very, very many all over the world. You see timid multitude of people going to churches everywhere. Very, very good. It's good to go to church by God's grace. But we must go beyond that. And you see population of people, number of people trooping into churches every Sunday morning and all that. They are very, very good. Our church is large. Our church is big. The question now is how many of those people have their names in the book of life? How many of us have our, book, our name in the book of life? That is the main thing that we must go be joined church and we must come to a point of knowing Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. That's what God expects of us. 
That's what God expects of me. And God will give that to us in the name of Jesus Christ. So Christianity, as I said earlier, go beyond religion. Multitude of people will always uh, love to follow Jesus Christ. If you look at the Bible time, they will, they will follow Christ. Anytime they hear about Jesus Christ, you will see Timmy Montu following him. Some of them will follow Jesus because of bread and butter. Some will follow him. I was talking to one uh, a, a, a certain set of people, two women, one day, one day for evangelism. And I was telling them, I see some people follow Jesus and uh, go to church for various reasons. Some go to church because they want husband. That's why they go to church. Some go to church because they want wife, a good wife. Some people go to church because they need job, somebody who can assist them to, to secure a job. Somebody go to church, some people go because, because of contract, because of business. Now, if you are going to church for any of these reasons, then you will not really know how to serve God. Some go to church because if I go there, they will do this for me, they will do this for me. Is that the reason why you are going to church? Some go to church not with the mind to know God, to be born again, to serve the Lord, to go to heaven. That should be the number one goal. So people go to church for various reasons. There were people in the time of Christ that followed him, not because they were ready to go to heaven, not because they want to know God and serve God. Some of them went to Christ because Jesus was giving them bread to, to eat. And when Christ now started telling them the truth of the kingdom, how to serve the Lord, how to prepare themselves, how to make it to heaven, some of them said, that's a hard saying. Who can do that? And a lot of them started going back, one after the, the other. And they were going back. Christ now turned back and look at the few people remaining. He now asked them, will you also go with them? See other people that started coming. They are going back. They are going back because uh, they, they, that thing they came for is not available for now and they are going back. For that reason, some of them started going back. And Peter said, to whom shall we go? That you can see in the book of John chapter 6. You can write it down. And when you read down all through John chapter 6, you will see what I'm telling you now. Some people go to church for various reasons and the reason is not to make heaven. The reason is not to have a change of life. The reason is not to get born again. And they all go there. If I go there, and there's some big men there, and some people there, and they will, they will help me, they will, uh, will get a husband there, I will get a wife, I will, they will support me. It's not, that's not the reason. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, every other thing shall be added. Can I hear a good amen there? So you see teeming multitude of people without righteousness. You also see that everywhere. That very many, they are religious but not righteous. Look at Romans chapter 10. I read verse 3. Romans chapter 10. Look at verse 3. In Romans chapter 10, God wants us to graduate from being religious to righteous. And He wants us to have that nature. In Romans 10, look at verse 3. Romans 10, verse 3. Are you there? For they being ignorance of God's righteousness. Yes, they go to church. But the ignorance of God's righteousness, they do not have the power that can change their lives. They don't understand the God, the ways they're supposed to know God, and all that God has provided for them to make them righteous and make them free from sin. They don't know. For they being ignorance of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own word, righteousness. What is their own righteousness now? The righteousness of water baptism, that's good. But that's not enough. The righteousness of Holy Communion. The righteousness of I'm a committed member of this church. I'm a communicant. That's not enough. They establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of who? Of God. There's a righteousness that is approved by God. And a righteousness that is man-made. Not accepted by God. That no matter how much you practice your own righteousness. Human righteousness uh, that is not from God is uh, like filthy rats. So God wants us to possess his own righteousness that comes through salvation from sin, that brings transformation to our life. That's the kind of righteousness Christ came to offer us. Look at chapter 14 of Romans. I read 17. Chapter 14, I read verse 17. Are you there? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Can I hear a good amen there? But righteousness and peace and joy. Where? in the Holy Ghost. So we go to church not just for meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not just meat and drink. We drink, we wine, we do this. Ah, God, it's sweet, oh, it's sweet, oh, I'm blessed. Oh. No, 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 it goes beyond that. But it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we mean that the kingdom goes beyond just mere religion. It goes beyond just mere gathering. 
And that's why this evening, I know that God will bless you and bless you. Now, just before we pray, example of false Christianity. Examples of false Christianity. There's a true Christianity, there's a false Christianity. There's a, rich, a Christianity that is a, of God that will take you to heaven. There's a man-made Christianity that will end up in hell, but you will not be the type in Jesus' name. First Christianity, first example of first Christianity. Look at this, Matthew chapter 7, from verse 15 to 23. Matthew 7, from verse 15 to 23. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 15 to 23. Are you there? Matthew 7 from verse 15. Church, are you there? I read, Beware of false prophets that are everywhere now. We come to you in sheep's clothing. They appear like Christians. They appear like believers. They appear like pastors. They talk sweet. They behave fine. But inwardly, they are revenue wolves, deceivers. You shall know them by their what? By their fruits. Do men gather grapes? Or tons of figs of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth a good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is winged down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit, what you see the air, you shall know them. You will be a true Christian. Not everyone, listen to this now, that said unto me, who does not call the name of Jesus Christ? Everybody. Allah's call him Lord. Drunkards call him Lord. Fornicators call him Lord. Cultists call him Lord. All the people, good people and bad people, they call Jesus Christ. What do they call him? Lord. The Bible says something here. Say, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord. Sing unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, in that day when the end of this life has come. And then heaven is before them, and hell also is there. And they will say, don't you know me, Jesus? I belong to that church. I was a member of that church, a singer in that church, a preacher in that church. Don't you know me again? I was the one that did this and do that for you. And in your name, I did this wonders. I performed miracles. Jesus will tell them. Look at the Bible. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out many devils? And in thy name done many wonderful wars? Now look at the reply here in verse 23. And then will I profess unto them. What do you see there? I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that do what? Walk in equity. What does that mean? They belong to a church, but they were not saved. They work miracle, but not righteous. They belong to a church, but not born again. So you can see that's a false kind of uh, Christianity. Working for God, doing wonders for God, but without a change of life. You will not be like that in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 30 to 32. See another kind of example of false Christianity, false religion, false belief. There are people that will claim this and claim that, but they don't really have that thing. In Ezekiel chapter 33, I read from verse 30 to 32. Are you there? Also, thou son of man... The children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of what you see there of the houses and speaking one to another, everyone to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from forth from the from the Lord, and they come unto thee. As the people eh, commit, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do what to them. For with their mouth they show much love. They show much, they talk so much about God, but they are not prepared to change. They are not ready to repent. 
but their heart goeth after their covetousness. No matter how they hear the word of God, they still go back to their sinfulness, still go back to their smoking, still go back to their boyfriend, still go back to their girl's friend, still go back to the stealing habit, still go back to their court. So they come, they sit down, they hear that no matter what you are telling them, their heart is still after their covetousness. That thing that made up their mind to do, set up their mind to do, they still want to do it. And the things they are hearing is not changing them. He's not transforming them. The Bible says they still believe in that. In verse 32 now, he says, And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument for the year thy words, but they do them not. They hear thy words, but they do them not. These are the people we call is a false people. Who tried to go to church thinking that where we're going and they are not prepared for anything good. I pray none of us will be like this in Jesus' name. Going to church without interest to be saved from sin and be prepared for heaven is like wasting time. So working for God too is not enough without an experience of salvation and righteousness. Some people will tell you, I'm a pastor, I'm a leader in a church, I'm a worker in my church, I'm this one, I'm that It's good to work for God. I work for God too. But let us go beyond that. That no matter the position, no matter our title, we must know that the first thing first is a change of life. Is that life that qualifies us as anything or anybody before God. Number two, evidence of true Christianity. How do we know a true Christian? What evidence are we supposed to see? From where we read before now, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, the Bible says, Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, what happened now? He's a new creature. Can I hear a good amen there? And in John chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, For as many as receive him, to them gave you the power to become sons of God. Praise the Lord. When you receive Christ into your life, you have power, and it is that power in you that enables you to say no to sin that this kind of life, I cannot live it again. I'm born again now. I'm a child of God now. I want to go to heaven. So when you receive Christ, then you have power. But if you do not have Christ in you, you are weak. That's why some people cannot overcome sin. The first John chapter 3, in verse 9 and 10, the Bible said that when we believe in God, that one of the evidence is that we will not sin. We have that grace of God. Christ is in us, and that Christ in you will keep you from every evil in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 5 to 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, from verse uh, 5 to 9. True salvation separates us from sin and sin partners. It's true salvation. When we are truly born again, then something happens within. And that grace of God comes in. And that now enables us and then give us the grace and the strength to live a transformed life. First Thessalonians chapter 1. I read from verse 5 to 9. Are you there? I read. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. And in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. So that ye were examples to all that believe in where? In Macedonia and eh, Achaia. You'll be an example in Bonnie here. I thought that would be a very good amen there. When you are truly born again and you understand Christianity, you know, it, it baffles me. Do you know that India is supposed to be a very great nation, very wonderful nation, because they will tell you that this is a number of Christians in Nigeria. Could you imagine that? And we are far, far above and more than other religion all over the country. They said this is a number of Christians in Nigeria, but Nigeria is still as bad as anything you can think about. Because if all this number of so-called Christians by name are able to live their life in the office, everywhere would have been able to change this country by the grace of God. It's the same people that call themselves Christians that will be still in the office, stealing government money, and telling lies, and deceiving the government. But they have the name umbrella of under the umbrella of a Christian. I go to that church. I go to that church. But if all this population 
on the number of believers or Christians, so to say, that go to church every Sunday are true Christians indeed who have lied by the grace of God. They would have turned their companies and the society, wherever they are, upside down. But today we have multiple people by name. But we have corruption everywhere still. The same people are the ones that will give bribe. The same people are the ones that will give kickback. The same people are the ones that will tell you, without giving me money, your fire cannot move from this place to the other place. Then you, on Sunday, they go to church. And then you look at the way we worst the situation for ourselves. But look at this one. Because their life brought transformation. And everybody will begin to start talking about them. He said, your, your story is everywhere. They become example to other people. Okay, these people, they're different. No, that people, they're different. No, and that is what is supposed to be. Look at verse 8. He said, from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God's word is spread abroad. So that we need not to speak anything. Can I hear a good amen there? For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we, in we had unto you and how ye turn. You see that? That's salvation. To God from idol to serve the living and true God. Verse 10. And to wait for the Son from heaven whom, whom is raised from the dead even Jesus Christ which delivered us from the rot to come. So salvation brings change in our life. Transformation. That's what happened here in the book of Thessalonians. The people that repented, they have that testimony, they have that change of life. And everybody were talking about their good life. This man is no more the same. Oh, this girl has changed. Oh, this woman has changed. Oh. So if we have people like that all over Nigeria that goes to church every Sunday, we have a better country by God's grace. But we have a lot of them going to church. But we have fewer of them that really understand what it means to be born again and be free from sin. May God help you and help all the nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I told you that true salvation separates us from sin. And also separate us from sin partners. It's like somebody saying, I'm a child of God now. You will come out of sin. That's what shows you are born again. Then all the sin partners you have before. Partners in crime. Partners in crime. That you will used to go together to steal. When you are born again, you will tell all those your partners, please, I'm no more in your, in your, group, in your group. I'm no more in your club. Don't call me again. I can't get there again. That's salvation. You separate from them. Or you have a boyfriend before, a man friend before. And when you are born again, you tell the pet, please don't smell my house again. Don't come near me again. I'm not a child of God. There's separation all the time when we are born again. And then you do a dubious business, terrible business with somebody. And then you dupe, you, you steal. And then you tell the person, please, I am now a Christian. Don't come to me. I can't do that business again. That means you have, you have, something has happened to you. So there's a change within. Then you separate from sin and from all the sin partners. Sin partners. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at this. 14 to 18. Are you there? From verse 14 to 18. I read. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with what? With unrighteousness. And what communion as light with what? Darkness. And what concord as Christ with what? Belial. And what part as he that believeth with what? An infidel. And what agreement as the temple of God with what? Idols. For ye are the temple of the living God. When you are born again, your body becomes a temple of the living God. Your life, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 17 Wherefore, what do you see, see there? Come out from eh, among them and be ye separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. In verse 18 and will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters says the Lord Almighty. So when you repent you decamp from the camp of all the evil men and all the evil women and you separate yourself from them and God said when you do that you come out from among them you separate yourself from sin from sin partners from sinful friends he said then I will become a father to you 
You now become my son and my daughter. But as long as you remain in their calm, you continue in that evil. God said, no matter how much you play religion or you go to church, God said, I'm not your father. You are not my son. You are not my daughter. I pray today you'll be a son and a daughter of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we pray, exhortation to true Christianity. God is calling us to true Christianity. Christianity that's above church. Christianity that's above religion. Christianity of life, of character, of behavior, of righteousness. That's the kind of Christianity God wants us to possess. Look at Isaiah before we pray. Chapter 1. I read verse 16 to 19 before we pray. In Isaiah chapter 1 from verse what verse? 16 to 19. Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 16 to 19. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16 to 19. I read verse 16. Wash you make you clean. Whatever you are doing that is not right God is telling you, wash yourself from that. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. What's the next thing there? Cease to do evil. Cease to do is basically like saying, stop committing sin. Don't practice that thing you are doing again. Stop that thing you are doing that is not right. Then learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless plead for the widows. Now, come now. When? Not tomorrow. Come now. And let us do what? Reason together. Who is talking now? Who is talking now? Almighty God. It's not me. It's not the pastor. Not your church. Not my church. Come now, my daughter. Come now, my son. Let us reason together. I want to turn things around in your life. Do your sins be as what? As scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as what? As wool. See verse 19 now. If ye be willing to do this and obedient to what you are hearing, what will happen? Ye shall do what? Eat the good of the land. Your blessing is here today. He said, I want to turn you around. I want to move you from church to Christ. I want to move you from religion to, Christ, uh, to righteousness. But God said, there's a step you must take. And we are encouraged to learn. We are encouraged to stop evil. And then, then we are willing with the whole of our heart, not being forced, not being pushed. And you must know that this is the right thing to do. I have been living this kind of life, but now I want a new life. And God said, when you do that, you will enjoy me. You will eat the good of the land. I will become your father and you become my daughter and my son. Let us rise up to pray. Rise up now. We want to talk to God that the Lord will help us that this grace of God to live for Christ, to be the righteous man and woman God wants us to be, this day we will experience it. Let's rise up as we pray and say, God, take me beyond church. Take me beyond religion. I want to be righteous. I want to be in Christ. It is only in Christ we become new creatures. The Bible said all things have passed away. When you are in Christ, all things have passed away. It's Christ that changes our life. It's Christ that forgives our sin. Why not pray now and say, God, I want to be in Christ. I want to be in Christ. You have called me. I'm, lent, I'm ready to come. God, I am before you today. If you have not given your life to Christ before now, you can do that even now. The Lord is here with us. The grace of God is available. God wants to turn you around, my brother, my sister. He wants to change your life. My young child here, my young youth here, young boy here, look unto God this day. We are talking about Christianity not church now. We are talking about Christianity, not religion. We are talking about a life, a life, a life, not just service. Let's pray and say, God, my life, I surrender. My life, I give to you. My life, Lord, come into my life. Turn me around. Change me, oh God. All this kind of sinful life, sinful behavior, sinful character, all this kind of religion without Christ in me, and I go to church, I do this and do that, but there is no trace of righteousness. If I should die like this, I will not go to heaven. And you know those things are there. The stealing is there, the lying is there, the fornication is there, the fighting is there, abusive spirit is there, and all the revival spirit is there. And you know that with this kind of life, I go nowhere. Why not make up your mind now? I say, God, I just need a change from you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed.
Give me a good amen, dear. Brethren, if you want to graduate from just being a church man to a Christian, to a child of God, and from being just a religious person, just practicing religion, belonging to a place, a group, with that righteousness, if you want something new, I want you to raise up your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Raise up your hand very well. Don't be ashamed. Man or woman, father or mother, children, anybody. And you want to move from just being a church man to a Christian. Just being a religious man to a man having righteousness, knowing God that you are going to heaven if you happen to die. Raise up your hand very well. God bless you. God bless you. That will happen to you today. I said that will happen to you today. And the Lord will do it in, the, in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. You say this after me. Raise up your hand up very well. My Father, I thank you. I know you love me. I have been a sinner. But today, you have opened my eyes to see the need for salvation. That it is not church, but Christ. It is not religion, but righteousness. Father, help me from this day to live for you, to stop all my sins and totally follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I want to thank you for your children. You brought us here so you can minister to us. We have heard your word, Lord. Everyone here that have identified, that have confessed their sins to you, either in their heart or even those who did not raise up their hands, Lord, I pray that this moment show them mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. That the spirit of church without Christ and the spirit of religion without Christ, righteousness will disappear from them. That from now, through salvation, through Christianity, through godliness, that produce a change within us that we shall be made new creatures from this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn our lives around, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Raise up your hand, everybody, now. Before we go into interactive session, that will be the last part of this thing. I want to tell you that from this day, God will make you righteous. What we are going to be more concerned about will not be church. It will be Christ. A change of life. A beautiful life. Anywhere you go, your life will be different in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you for your sons and daughters. We have come here to receive from you. Let these blessings abound in every life. That your sons and daughters here will begin to exhibit a new kind of life anywhere. That our life will bring honor and glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the devil has done or planted in our body as a result of sin, it could be sickness or poverty or problem, Lord, I pray that this new change, this new life, this word of God we have received today, let it destroy every root of sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. That whatever is not of God in our lives and our families shall not stand. The will of God shall be done. Beautiful life. Lord, from this day, help us to march forward. Thank you, Lord, because we have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Just sit down. God bless you. Our pastor will come and announce to us how we are going to meet. Even where you are going to meet to, will serve you there. Because we have just color water for you. Then, please be patient, because that's why we are here. So that we can go through this program together. And I believe at the end, at the end, you'll be happy that you came. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Hit your chest and say, I am blessed. I am really blessed. And a 